Check, check. Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Reformed Church. I am Pastor Jason. We are excited. This is our first in-session day of Sunday school and breakfast. Hope everybody got fed that wanted fed. If not, there might be a little left over after church. Why don't we stand and greet each other this morning? A handshake, a smile, an elbow rub, whatever you feel comfortable with. There are so many announcements. I would ask that you would make sure you double check your bulletin before you leave. Um, just to go over a handful of them before we get to prayer requests. Uh, the Sunday school schedule for every Sunday was in the bulletin. Uh, senior high youth meets tonight at 6 p.m. in the youth room. Grief care on Wednesday. Talk to Mary Limmert if you're interested, if you haven't attended yet. FCA, see you at the poll dates and our date and time are in the bulletin. Uh, just a reminder, no men's Bible study at the shed until after harvest. Um, but after harvest, Dave will let us know when that starts back up. Thursday's treasures is this, this week, right? This week. And the theme is Grandma's House. And they have special speakers who wrote a book. And they'll have food and a speaker. And everything will remind you of when you used to go and visit grandma and grandpa's house when you were younger. And that's Thursday morning at 10 a.m. All are invited, and there's usually pretty good food involved. And I would imagine if it's grandma's house, my grandma's house had molasses cookies. Rhonda? No molasses cookies. So it should be called everybody's grandma's house except Jason's grandma's house. Just joking. I'm just giving you a hard time. We share the same grandma. <laughs> Pastor Dobby's lost. <laughs> uh, what else we have? Oh, your deacon and elder uh, nomination forms went out. Not the nominations, but just the list. If you received a letter and your name's on the letter, that means you are eligible this year uh, to be a deacon or elder. We would love it if very few names were removed from that. We ask if you would leave your name on it unless you have a major conflict or something going on in your own life. You're like, ooh, this is a bad year to be an elder or a deacon. If you've never served before, let me put you in touch with someone who has served before who can tell you it's not as scary as you think it is. It actually can be fun and rewarding and uh, all kinds of wonderful things. So please uh, check those out. Uh, middle school youth kickoff September 29th here in the parking lot at 530. Wayne Burns is going to tell us about Smoke Off. Wayne. It's more than just church. Wayne. It's more than just church. So, um, and the very first thing we talk about when we meet is what happens in there stays in there. <laughs> but Good thing you're going off this year. I'm going off this year. Consider staying on. Yeah. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, Pastor Dobby is going to let us know his after church Bible study Sunday school starts today. There you go. So uh, if you're interested in uh, end times prophecy, 
if you'd uh, like to explore how Christ comes again and um, rights all the wrongs and makes everything right in this world and rewards his righteous, that's us, um, we'll be exploring the book of Revelation, the most prophetic book in the Bible uh, after church in uh, our adult Sunday school class. So it should be, uh, it's a book that's a, a, a blessing and an encouragement to God's people uh, in, in chaotic, uncertain times. So give us some time about coming after church, book of Revelation, in the Constitution Room starting today. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Make sure to check out, there's an announcement on the back for Lakeview Camp's Fun Day with the 5K run. Uh, all the details in the back of the bulletin. Hope devotionals are out on the table. Uh, what else? Anybody else have any business or announcements before we get started? Before we move on to the prayer requests? I see uh, two amazing people standing in the fellowship hall who uh, helped with breakfast this morning. Mark and Brenda Smith, Jake, or Wyatt and Jenna helped. Could you give them a round of applause? And say thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I, we're going to have a paper sheet hanging up soon because I think that was my job and I just realized I haven't done it yet. But you can go online. We're sending out the link every week. If you're willing to make a breakfast, um, sign up online or grab uh, me and give me the date and we'll make sure you're signed up for one of our Sunday morning breakfasts. Um, any other business? Ooh. We had... Four responses again to the trivia contest in the bulletin or in the Friday email. And just a reminder, because those emails are so long, I put a little trivia somewhere in it. And if you answer that trivia, you can win a prize to show me, hey, I know not all these announcements pertain to me, but they're all important. And thank you for sending them out on Friday morning. And our question this week was who was looking for helpers for their... Uh, activity on Wednesday nights, I think, and it was the Jim's group, and I've got the four names of people who turned it in written, and I'm going to have Jerry draw one. You got one, there you go, grab that there, just stuck together. Oh, she's not here this morning, but because they doubled up on their uh, treatments this week, Cheryl Vanderlinden is still in Minneapolis, and I told her, even though she wasn't here, they, are, they have an excused absence because cancer treatment is an excused absence. So she will win when we see her. I know she's probably watching. Uh, these are all things left over from the coin jar at VBS. When I took all the coins to the bank, they gave me back a jar full of stuff and said, these are not legal coins and we cannot take these. And Cheryl will win the Iowa Hall of Pride token that very lar even larger than it says Iowa Hall of Pride. On the back it says no cash value. <laughs> And I also want to mention, I, I know that this was a mistake. What did, oh, here. Um, last week, Dave uh, Bruxford won three tokens to Chuck E. Cheese, um, which is still open and running in Des Moines. And then I found him in the offering box Sunday after church. And I know, I know how Dave gives. He just gives, he just reaches into every pocket and pulls everything out and throws it in. That's I told you, he probably went, you probably went to Chuck E. Cheese and you didn't have your money. So there you go. Uh, Dave got that. Prayer requests and updates. Um, we are rejoicing this week. Jordan Ben Wyck finished. Uh, he is told he is done with laser treatments. So we are praising God for that. No more long car trips and then uh, sore arms. Um, other updates. Larry let us know that Cindy is doing, she's doing well after her surgery, but she's still in a lot of pain and not near uh, where the incisions were, but up in like her shoulder area. From anesthesia, could be from the air that they introduced to make everything kind of blow up, but she's, she's uncomfortable. So we're going to be praying for Cindy this morning. Um, I know, oh, Christy Lindsay message this morning. We've been praying for Jeff Lindsay's mom, Debbie, um, who's had a real rough month. She let us know this morning that he's entering, um, the, or she's entering the end of life stage. So she's asked for prayers for uh, the Lindsay's and uh, all those who know and love Debbie, um, that they're going to be with her as Debbie uh, takes these next few days to pass. So we'll be praying for Debbie this morning and the whole family. 
Um, other other updates that I have. I think that's all the prayer updates I have. Does anybody else have any joys or concerns they would share? I know we'll be praying for the farmers this morning too because there's a lot out in the fields and a lot of long hours and dangerous equipment. Any other joys or concerns? Okay. Well, if we got them covered in the bullet. We got them covered. Um, so we also found out this morning, unfortunately, Charity is uh, feeling ill, and she's our piano player this morning. So I called Owen, who was um, at 8 a.m. in the morning, up and out of bed, and I think he was getting ready to mow the lawn or something. And I said, hey, uh, we might need some songs this morning. And Owen said, oh, Father, I would love to play some songs with you. <laughs> and I said, quickly, boy, quickly, over to the church. Would you stand this morning? We're going to open with a few songs. They are not listed in your bulletin, but we're hoping they're going to be up on the screen. And we may have a special guest. Uh, We're going to do Jesus Lifted Me. We've done this one a few times before. If you don't know it, you'll catch on quick. It's a pretty old standard uh, from many, many years ago. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. I walked through that valley, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, oh, Jesus lifted me. I walked through that valley, but Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Owen, they've got different words on the screen sometimes. That's going to make it fun. Oh, here we go. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Verse, verse. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. You probably know this one. They'll catch up. (laughs) Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life are gone, I'll fly away. Like a bird from these prison walls, I'll fly, I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away. To the land where joy shall never end, I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away.
fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. You can be seated. We're feeling a little excited this morning, so we're going to throw one more in, and Andrew's going to come up and sing with us. Uh, that green mic right there, she's going to be on the green mic. We've done this one before here. This is a scripture song. There are no words on the screen and no words up here, but you will catch on very quickly. Let the Lord God be my portion. Let the Lord God be my salvation. Those are the only words. Repeat after me. Let the Lord God be my portion. Let the Lord God be my, salvation. The, Lord God be my salvation. the men are going to go like this. Let the Lord God be my portion. Let the Lord God be my salvation. Guys, here we go. Let the Lord God be my portion. Let the Lord God be my salvation. And the women are going to go like this. All the women, here we go. Let the Lord God be my portion. Let the Lord God be my salvation. Then the men are going to go like this. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Men, here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Women like this. All right, well, let's hear it. It's not a competition, but I'm going to tell you right now, if it was, the women were the only ones who showed up on the field today. But the men are going to pick it up here in just a second. Here's how it works. The men are going to sing their part, and then the women are going to sing their part, and the men are going to owe, and then the women are going to owe, and then the men are going to sing while the women owe, and then the women are going to sing while the men owe, and then everybody's going to owe together. Nod your head if you're with me. We say it every time. Just say, am I a low singer or a high singer? If I'm a low singer, watch Jason, and if his mouth is singing, I'm singing, and if it's owing, I'm owing. Same with the high singers. Here we go. Men sing first. Ready? Let the Lord God be my portion. Let the Lord God be my salvation. Women sing. Minnow. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Women oh. Men sing women oh. Let the Lord God be my portion. Let the Lord God be my salvation. Switch. Oh, 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 everybody, oh, 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 one more time, oh, 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 hey, nice job, everybody, good job, turn to the person next to you and say, you did a good job. Turn to the person next to you who maybe didn't do a good job and say, you'll get it next time. <laughs> children are invited forward this morning for the children's message. If you've got any coins or bills, wave them in the air and they will come by and grab them. 
Come on down, come on down. I'm going to be watching real close. We're going to double check to make sure Dave didn't put his toe in. Let's see, let's see. Oh, good job. Wave him high if you got any hands out there. There's a couple back there. There's a couple back there. I think we're still still saving money for uh, some blankets for the blankets. Grab a seat. You're going to sit me now. Oh, seat, right? Crayons. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Is there? Oh, yes. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness gracious. We got a whole bunch of people up here. I'm going to hope I got enough crayons and coloring sheets. That's all. Oh, my goodness. You guys did awesome this week. Oh, thank you. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. All right. Here's the question I have for you this morning. How do you meet someone for the very first time? What do you do if you meet someone for the... Peter, what do you do? You say hi. Can I try with you? What else? What else? What do you think, Luke? Smile and wave. Oh, smile and wave. Can we try it? Me and you? Let's do Hi. Hi. You didn't wave. Hi. All right, everybody turn and look at someone out there and wave and smile and say hi. How else? How else is somewhere, somehow you can meet somebody for the first time? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Let's try it. Hello. It seems like we're maybe missing something. What else can you do? Yeah. What's that? Greet each other? How do you greet each other? Oh! Shake hands. Turn to somebody next to you and shake hands and say hello. Hello. What else? What else? What? What else might you do? Oh, a high five. Everybody out there and here, turn to somebody and high five. Hello. Hello. I think, does this, does this help? What else can we do, Via? Say your name. You can say, you can smile. You can wave. You can shake hands. Oh, yes, you can say good morning or good evening. We're going to practice right now. Turn to somebody next to you everywhere. You're going you're gonna to smile wave and say hi then you're going to say hello good morning shake their hands and tell them what your name is that's a lot to do but we here we go go hi hello good morning my name is jason hi good morning hello nice to meet you my name is jason oh high five yes here's why i'm telling you this because our bible stories today are about how god says hi when he meets somebody for the first time. For instance, Odin, Odin, come here, come here. If I was meeting Odin for the first time and I was God, God doesn't just smile and wave. Sometimes God does something crazy like makes it rain or he makes the earth shake or maybe he makes a fire come out of nowhere like one of our stories. Today. We don't know, but every but he usually gets to say hi to God in a different way. Oh, I think Odin's going to say hi to somebody out there in a new way. So here's your job. Before you leave today, before you leave church, you have to find somebody new, and you have to find a way to say hi that you've never done before. You think he's going, yeah, he's going back to us, folks. I might have scared him when I showed him the God earthquake. Did you know Odin and I are cousins? Is that kind of weird? Yeah. yeah. That's weird? We're wearing the same shirt, yeah. You've never seen a pastor have a cousin? Maybe I'm the first one. Wait, watch this. If you're my cousin, raise your hand. Oh, look at look at all those hands back there. That's, a, that's when they come. Oh yes. Oh, you guys are nephews. Oh, you guys aren't cousins. All the people related to me, they sit makes it way in the back because they're makers. That's true. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We are all going to have the challenge today before we leave church to find somebody new and go, I'm going to pretend like I'm meeting them for the first time like God. And you've got to do something you've never done before. Maybe you touch an elbow. Maybe you take your pinky and touch their shoulder. 
Maybe you bow or turn your head sideways. You've got to find somebody new and say hi to them in a way you've never said before, okay? Okay. Let's pray. How do we pray? Take your hands. Fold your hands, bow your head, close your eyes. Dear God, we want to thank you that when you meet us for the first time, you never do it in the same way. You have so many different ways you meet people. Sometimes you meet them in a whisper. Sometimes you meet them when you're loud. Sometimes you meet them when they're reading the Bible. Sometimes you meet them during singing. Sometimes you meet them while they're praying. God, we're going to pray that when we meet you, we recognize it. We know, oh, this is God, and he is speaking to me in a way I've never known before. We pray this in your name, and all of God's children said, amen. amen. All right. Crayons and sheets up here, suckers over there on the bench. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me. Okay. He cares for me. He's so good to me. God answers prayers. God answers prayers. God answers prayers. He's so good to me. What else do we know? I don't have a... What you need? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Our first scripture today comes from the book of Exodus. I have it mislabeled in the bulletin, but we are going to do verses 1 through 15. There are many, many times in Scripture when God meets people for the first time, and this one is a very well-known one from Exodus chapter 3. I'm going to find it up here in this Bible. There we go. This is after Moses made some really foolish mistakes and committed a crime so bad that he had to leave his home. He uh, was on the run and found another family to be with. And after many, many, many years, he was just left on his own, a shepherd in the fields with his sheep, with nothing to really think about other than the sins he'd committed and his relationship with those around him. From chapter 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that through the, though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. God appears to many people throughout Scripture in the form of fire, but he never does it the same way twice. Later you'll read that he shows up to his people as a pillar of fire at one point. Another time he might show up as a fire that rains down from heaven to light a fire around a sacrifice. God might use the same theme of fire or water or dirt or even speaking. But rarely when God has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone does he do it the same way twice. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. 
a custom that would have been very normal if he was in the temple in the city. Anytime you went to the temple of God, it was considered holy ground. You were supposed to remove your shoes, your sandals, and go in barefoot to show that there was nothing on your feet that was going to soil God's floor. God is showing Moses in this moment, holy ground just isn't the temple where you worship. Holy ground is anywhere where I am present. You need to remember, no matter if you're out in the middle of nowhere in the desert or in the temple or anywhere in between, I can make that holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to, the re to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, and now the cry of the Israelites, God's people, has reached me. And I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God shows up to Moses, who is a criminal on the run. He committed an act of murder and escaped with his life and is living in the wilderness, tending sheep. And God not only shows up to talk about the sin he's committed, God shows up to talk about all of his people that have been enslaved by the Egyptians and tells Moses, guess what? You, the broken, sinful shepherd in the middle of nowhere, is now going to be the one who goes and frees all my people. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He says, who do I tell him is sending me? They say, tell him, I am who I am. Not real specific, very vague, and probably a little strange when they say, well, who sent you? There are many gods represented throughout this region. Which god, which statue, which idol sent you? And Moses is to say, he is who he is. Or he said, I am who I am. Very big and strange and hard to understand. He does say, make sure you tell him it's the God that did this and this and this for your fathers and your ancestors. But when they want to know who I am right now, tell him I am who I am. I have here a copy of one of the greatest books ever written. It's called... Ghostbusters. Have anybody read, has anybody read this book? It's a book. Nope. It's a book. You might be asking yourself right now, was Ghostbusters a book before it was a movie? No. What they used to do a long time ago before you could turn your TV on and watch any movie you wanted for a dollar or two or a monthly streaming fee was movies were only in movie theaters. 
This was even before you could go to those stores that had them all lined up and spend an hour picking one out to take home and watch. It was really started in the 50s, but it got really popular in the 70s and 80s before VCRs, which is what... I'm not going to explain VCRs. Raise your, no, don't forget it. <laughs> That's how we used to watch movies. But before we even had a VCR to watch movies, you went to the theater, and if you missed it in the theater, you just didn't get to see it. Or if you wanted to watch it again, you couldn't watch it again unless maybe a movie theater brought it back, but that was only the huge ones. So they would write a book about every movie that came out, and you could buy it at the store for a couple bucks. And when I was a kid, not only did we not yet have a VCR, but we didn't go out to the movies, maybe, maybe one or two movies a year, maybe, maybe on vacation. I tried to remember this week how many movies I saw in the theater before sixth grade. I saw E.T., Karate Kid 2, and The Goonies. Those were the three movies I saw in the theater that I can remember before I was in sixth grade. But here's another thing I'm not going to explain, but ask your parents if you need to know. They have these things. Oh, I think they still do this. They still do book orders at school, right? Yeah, you could go to your book order at school, your little colorful magazine with all the books that kids can buy and read, and they had movie novelizations in the book order. So all these movies that I wanted to see, all the movies that the kids at school were talking about, I would order the books, and the books were based off the script, which was made years, if not at least a few months, before the movie was made. So often you could get the book before the movie even came out, so I could then read the book and go to school, and when the kids would talk about the movie, I could say, yeah, I totally saw that movie too. <laughs> really good movie, really good movie. I liked this part, and this part, and this part, and eventually I would trip up, and they would say, I don't remember that in the movie. And then I realized they fill this book with so much stuff that was in the script that got cut out, or maybe like if it was a real big action movie like Die Hard, there wasn't a lot of stuff you could put in a book, so it was just pages and pages of what the characters were thinking. And then you find out these other kids at school were like, I don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes I'd read the book, like I read Karate Kid 2 before I got to go see it in the theater. And when they were talking about it at school, they were like, hey, Karate Kid 2, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, that was better than the first one. At the end, when Miyagi is giving Daniel the talk, I was like, I was kind of tearing up. And they were all looking at me like, are you stupid? That was an okay movie, but it was not better than the first one. I don't think you know what you're talking about. You must have terrible taste in movies. And that's when I realized, oh, it doesn't matter what the book says because it could be way off from the movie. As I got older, I started reading reviews in the newspaper or online before I went to see movies. One of the reviewers that I love the most was Roger Ebert. I didn't always agree with Roger Ebert. He was out of Chicago. But uh, when he liked a movie, more than likely I was going to like the movie. If he didn't like a movie, I still probably had to see it to know for sure. But I try really hard when I see movies now not to let the reviews influence me. Because so many times I've watched a movie on TV that everybody had told me to skip and it ends up being amazing. Did I tear up at one point during the A-Team? Yes. I love that movie so much, I bought it. I watched the first part of it on a plane and then went to the store and bought it full price to watch the last 15 minutes I missed. All the reviewers hated it. But I learned, unless I had first-hand experience with the movie, I could only trust other people so far. Or somebody might tell me, ooh, watch out for this part, it's terrible. You're going to hate it. And I spend the whole movie waiting for that part and then find out, well, that wasn't as bad as they said. Or when I used to be a middle school uh, youth leader, I would always have to tell the kids, do not tell me about the movie you just saw because I want to see it. And one kid one time named Ben goes, I won't tell you anything important. But at the end, James Bond shoots the guy and says this. And I went, Ben! He's like, I didn't tell you who the guy was. I was like, I'm going to guess there aren't too many guys. I learned that 
I'm not going to ruin Harry Potter movies, but I learned many things about many movies I didn't want to know. But the important thing I learned again was, without first-hand experience, if you're only going, if you lived your whole life never watching movies, never listening to music, and never reading books, and only going off what somebody else told you about them, it would be pretty difficult to find any fulfillment or joy out of doing those things. Our second scripture today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 through 30. I think this one's short enough we can read it together. Let's read together from Mark, chapter 8. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. There was no internet, there was no newspaper, there was no television. This was all spreading by word of mouth. And all people were hearing completely depended on where they lived and who they talked to. So one town over here could say, have you heard about Jesus? And they might say, yeah, I heard he healed a blind man. And everybody would go, whoa. That's amazing. I'm not blind, but that's awesome for blind people. Somebody from this town over here might go, I know Jesus. I heard that he preached amazing sermons. And they would all go, oh, we've been waiting for an amazing preacher to come through town and kind of rile everybody up again. Some other town might go, oh, he's the prophet. He's the one who's telling us what God is going to do. Like the Old Testament prophets, like Elijah and Elisha. Like John the Baptist, he wants to baptize us with fire. Like John was baptizing us with water. Depending where you lived, all you knew about Jesus is what somebody you knew told you. Or maybe one of their friends told them from a friend, from a friend, from a friend, from a friend. You were getting second, third, fourth, fifth hand information about Jesus. Reading on together at 29. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is something else that Jesus did a lot. He would have an encounter with people. Often it was a miracle. He would heal someone of demons, or he would heal their illness, or their eyes, or their legs. And after they were done, he would look at the people and say, Hey, don't tell anyone about this. He healed a whole group of lepers. And said, now go present yourself to the priest so they can see you are clean and you can go back into the city. But don't tell them who did it. Almost every time he does this, it is after he's done a miracle. And there are some pretty good theories on why Jesus, of all people, would want to tell people, don't tell anyone about what I'm doing. He even says it at one point, my time has not come. He didn't want to probably cause a big craze or... or uh, a, a massive group of people, thousands of people coming out to him, he would have been overwhelmed if everybody had found out at the same time who he was. He had a timeline on what his life and his ministry was going to be, and that was probably one of the reasons why he said, don't tell anyone what I just did. He tells Peter here, Peter knows exactly who he is. You are the Son of God. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. And Jesus tells him, don't tell. Keep it a secret. No one can really keep it a secret. But as I read the encounters of God with people throughout Scripture, I start to realize, I think one of the reasons he was doing this is because he knew in a matter of days he was going to come across a sinful woman at a well and have a long conversation with her about who God is and what God can mean to her and she wasn't going to know him at first. But if he'd walked up and she'd said, oh, here's the Son of God, the Christ, that would have been a totally different conversation. When he walked up to a blind man on the street and started talking to him, 
If the blind man had known, some of them did, some of them didn't. Exactly who was coming, he might have been so focused on what was happening and not listening to what needed to be said. I start to think that one of the reasons Jesus said, don't tell people about what's going on, is because he wanted to meet them fresh on the road when they came across one another. He didn't want somebody walking up and going, I hear you're a miracle worker, and Jesus going, well, you don't need the miracle. You need the forgiveness, but that person not being able to accept it because they were focused on something else, or somebody who was maybe focused on the sins of others because Jesus would come and sometimes reprimand the elders who were being strict and harsh on the people and maybe Jesus didn't want them to focus on the fact that maybe he wasn't coming to fix the whole town today. He was just coming to speak to their hearts. I think Jesus wanted to keep meeting people one-on-one, face-to-face, giving them the encounter that they needed. Rarely does Jesus speak to someone the same way he spoke to someone else. It's why there are people in this room who say, when we are singing hymns with the organ or praise songs with the praise team, that is when I am talking to God. When the guy starts talking, I could give or take that most weeks, but the music is amazing. And some people are the same way. They go, I'm not big at standing up. I'm definitely not big at waving my hands or moving. I'm here for the scripture and the prayer. Some people would say, I come to church because we're supposed to. It says so in the Bible. But man, I really hear God's voice when I'm doing my devotions or I'm out in nature or I'm on the back of a tractor. The question is, when do you meet God? Have you met God? One of the things he does in Exodus is he says, here's where people have seen me before. But he doesn't tell Moses to tell them yet where they're going. He wants him to meet him right where he's at. This is what I did for your ancestors. But right now, I am who I am to you. Let's talk about that. Who am I to you in this moment? Don't be thinking about tomorrow or those problems that may last for years. I want you in this moment right now with me. I am who I am. I don't remember if I shared this story before, but we had a friend in a Bible study many years ago at our first church where we were going around this Bible study, and one of the questions was, what changed in your life after you met God really deeply that first time? Like the first time maybe in middle school at a camp or high school at a Rocky Mountain High or a church service where there was an altar call. All these examples were listed. What changed? How were you different after God than you were before God? And everybody went around the circle and shared, well, this is where I kind of had one of those moments where I met God. And this is what really changed inside me after. And we get her all around the way to the circle to one woman. And she said, I don't think I've ever changed. I think I'm the same now as I was when I was a little kid and learned about God. And somebody else in the group was, no, no, no. But we're talking about that one kind of deep moment, that one moment where you went a little farther, where you gave up maybe everything you were taught about God. Well, that led you to this place. At some point, you need to meet God and have your own relationship. And she's like, no, no, I never had one of those. I think I'm good. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know how many years it was down the road. She had one of those. A lot later than a lot of people have it. And she wishes she'd had it much sooner. But she was okay up to that point in her life taking what church had taught her, taking what her parents had taught her, taking what her friends and spouse had taught her, taking what camps and conferences had taught her, taking what devotional books had taught her, and just going, that is who God is to me, and calling it good. But she had never had that moment where she said, I think God wants to have a one-on-one conversation in the present right now. You can only go so long in your relationship with God living off what other people tell you. 
At some point, if you want to grow in God, you have to say, I need to know who God is when he asks. If God looked at me and said, you, who do you say I am? And your sentence starts, well, my mom told me you're, or my Sunday school teacher told me you are, or my pastor said you are, or my friends say you are. God's probably going to go, stop. Who do you say I am? Everything else is a reflection. It can be a beautiful reflection. I've known many people who read the Bible who didn't have a relationship but thought it was interesting. Some parts were beautiful. Some parts were moving. But just having read it wasn't enough because they didn't take the next step to go, well, what does this mean to me? As we kick off Sunday school, as we kick off breakfast, as we kick off youth groups, as we kick off our fall, I think a great challenge for all of us is that any time we encounter God, whether it's in worship, in a class, on the street, in a conversation, at home with your family, reading a scripture or praying before or after a meal or before you go to bed or laying there with your wife or husband and talking about the issues that are going on in your lives, I think it is important at some point to stop and say, what does this mean for me right now in this moment? Who can I acknowledge God to be in this place right now, this very second? Can I take the time to stop, push aside all the things that are on my mind and look at God and say, God, you are the creator, the healer, the forgiver. You are eternal. Your son is the Messiah. Show me how to live you are the light I follow. Part of the Sunday school lesson this morning, if you made it through the whole sheet, was thinking of all the different ways that God is named or given attributes or adjectives throughout the Bible. Because I know there are people here who go, I hear the word healer for God. That is meaningless to me. Because me or someone I love has not been healed. Some people would say the same thing for the word comforter. Some people would say the same thing for the word king. The word king means a whole lot different stuff in another country that actually has a king than it does here. All these words that describe God are all ways that God has approached us in our lives to show us who he is. Who is God to you today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we know that we often in our walks with you let our faith stand still. So often in our faith, we rest on what's come before. We rest on what people have told us. We rest on what's comfortable even though parts of our hearts or our minds might be in the middle of angst and grief. God, sometimes we stray because we just have become complacent and bored. God, sometimes we have taken those things that other people have told us about you and we've let them interfere with the fact that maybe we haven't met you where we're at. God, as we kick off this Sunday school season, this youth group season, as we consider all the things that you have done for us and blessed us with, as we consider all the things that you have walked us through in the past in our lives, as we consider all the stories of Scripture and the stories and testimonies of those we know and love, God, we would pray this morning that we could use those as we find you and meet you. But God, we would pray that you would give us the courage to go beyond that. To have a conversation with you maybe we've never had before. To apply your word to our lives in a way that we've needed to but been too scared to try. Or maybe, God, we've just been avoiding you because the things we carry 
are too painful. And like Moses, we're hiding, not wanting to be found. And yet, God, we know week after week in Scripture, we find you tracking people down, meeting them on the road and reminding them, I know who you are. I love you. I forgive you. Follow me. God, it is at that point where we hear those words, follow me, that sometimes we fall short. So God, let us hear those words and discuss those things with you. Let us pray and worship and read your scripture and fully digest into our hearts what it means to have a conversation with you and seek your name. God, hear our prayers this week as we rejoice that Jordan has finished his treatments. God, we pray that you would continue to heal Jordan's skin, continue to give him more mobility and flexibility and comfort. God, hear our prayers for Cindy as we pray for her to be relieved of her pain after her surgery. Lord, we pray that she would lose that soreness and stiffness that she would feel more and more like herself every day. God, hear our prayers for the Lindsays and the Steenhooks as they say goodbye to Debbie. Lord, we would pray that Debbie's family would be around her, able to speak to her and say those goodbyes. At the same time, God, we would pray that Debbie would feel your spirit comforting her, in the very room with her, walking with her and holding her until the moment she joins you, fully healed. God, hear our prayers for the farmers who are putting in extremely long hours working with large and dangerous equipment on low sleep. God, we pray not only for their safety, but we would pray for a bountiful harvest. We would pray you would reward them for their patience and hard work. We would pray that you would keep them awake and alert in the coming weeks. God, hear our prayers for Carter and Austin and all those who've answered a call to leave those they love behind, to serve elsewhere, keep them safe. Hear our prayers of comfort for the Brummel family after the loss of Alex. Lord, we pray you would walk with Alex's wife and child, his parents, his cousins, aunts and uncles, and just remind them to celebrate who he was and what he meant to them, knowing, God, that he means so much even more to you. God, we continue to pray for Luke and Al during their treatments. We continue to pray for recovery for Diane. We pray this morning for charity that she would feel better. God, hear our prayers as we continue for those who are in treatment or recovering from cancer. Allison and Michelle, Marilyn, Lowell, Jerry, Wanda. Ron, Grace, Nick, Chris, Phyllis. God, as we close out this prayer today, we confess so often when we feel like we need you, we don't know where to find you. We have strayed for so long and you seem so far away, we don't know what to do next. But God, we remember it is as simple as sitting and focusing a prayer to you it is as simple as singing a song we love. It is as simple as reading a passage of scripture. It is as simple as Jesus invited us to do, to be kind, to share with the needy, to love the unloved. In all of those moments, God, we are in conversation with you. Let us close this prayer with the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day.
Amen. Would you stand with me as we receive our benediction and sing our last song together, What the Lord Has Done in Me. As you leave this house of worship today, I would remind you, at some point in your life, it's probably already happened. It may not have happened. It will probably happen again. God will meet you on the road of life and he will ask you, who do you say I am? Not who have I been or what do you wish me to do? Who am I in your life right now? May you have the answer that springs forth from your soul. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. You are the fill in the blank. I don't know. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Into the river I will wade, there my sins have washed away. From the heavens mercy streams of the Savior's love for me. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. I will rise from waters deep into the saving arms of God. I will sing salvation songs. Jesus Christ has set me free. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Hosanna, Hosanna, to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Have a great week.
Hi, buddy.